we're back. We're live. We're at Think Tech, raising public awareness around these islands. I'm Jay Fidel, and that's Sharon Moriwaki to my left. And you can watch it to my left. If you look at thinktechhawaii.com, it'll take you to our Ustream uh, video. So you can see this on video, you can see it on internet radio, and you can hear it, of course, on KGU 760 AM. And today is Wednesday, which means... It's Energy Wednesday. It's Energy Wednesday. More specifically, it's Hawaii, the state of clean energy. It's a wonderful name, and it's and it's uh, supported by DBED, the Department of Business, uh, uh, Economic Development and Tourism, the Hawaii Energy Organization, and Hawaiian Electric, which was the subject of my article in yesterday's paper, where I wrote about. Thank you very much. I wrote about Ravi Am, who's going to be on the show on the 21st of this month. Right. We're going to talk to him as his exit his exit interview. <laughs> <laughs> his exit interview. <laughs> he's, he's leaving Hawaiian Electric at the end of the month, so it'll be very interesting. Um, and today we're going to talk about building management and how it can be energy efficient too with our principal guests. That is Michael Barros of uh, Honolulu Community College and Sherry Proper, uh, who is the Director of, of Strategic Initiatives at UH West Oahu. Ooh, yes. I haven't been out there yet. We need an invitation. <laughs> we have to go on location and talk you're, about you're it. You're invited. So Michael, say hi. Hi. Nice. <laughs> Sherry? Hello, I'm glad to be here. Okay, we also have uh, Paulette Feeney uh, from the Outreach College here at UH Manoa. Uh, don't say hi, you're not on a microphone, but we'll talk to you later. Okay, and uh, we hear, we're going to hear for, uh, in a moment, we're going to hear from uh, Chelsea Harder. Am I right? Yes, okay. that's correct. And we'll be right back to you. But before we do that, we have uh, Jackie Young with some Think Tech news. And we want to hear from her for a moment to get caught up on technology and energy that's happening on Think Tech News. Good afternoon. This is Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Jackie Young with some local tech news of interest. Surveillance drone use and development is on the rise in both the military and civilian sectors, as reported by Civil Beat and the Star Advertiser. And now the Marine Corps in Hawaii says it's expected to get a dozen RQ-7B shadows, followed by 45 RQ-21A integrators, along with the relocation of the Marine Unmanned Aerial Vehicle Squadron 3 from California to Kaneohe Bay. The Shadow has a 14-foot wingspan and a 375-pound maximum takeoff weight, while the newer integrator is 16 feet across and has a 135-pound maximum weight. Both are propeller-driven, and both can fly upward of 15,000 feet. The Marines are working on an environmental assessment for the relocation of the squadron and about 270 personnel, with a draft assessment expected to be released for public review on, in October. A final decision is expected in 2014. Elsewhere locally, Hawaiian Telecom, through the past year, more than doubled the number of subscribers to its television service on Oahu to 13,600 households and has expanded the reach of its fiber optic lines to about one third of the island's homes. The Star Advertiser reports Hawaiian Telecom crews have been laying fiber optic cable around Oahu to provide the bandwidth needed to support the TV service it began two years ago. The company so far has installed enough fiber optic capacity so that 100,000 of Oahu's estimated 300,000 households could receive the service, the company reported in its quarterly earnings report. Its goal is to gain an additional 50,000 homes a year. Growth of the TV service, high-speed internet subscribers, and revenue related to its acquisition of Wavecom Solutions Corporation were major revenue drivers for Hawaiian Telecom in the second quarter. However, the early retirement of debt and several other one-time factors curbed the company's profit in that quarter compared with the same period a year earlier. Finally, on the Big Island, astronomers using the Subaru telescope on Mauna Kea have found the lowest mass planet ever detected around a sun-like star using direct imaging techniques. Most so-called exoplanets are found when they pass in front of their star, making it dim ever so slightly or causing small gravitational wobbles in the star that can be seen in a light wave shift. The planet discovered is several times the mass of Jupiter and similar in size and is glowing dark magenta from the heat of its formation only 160 million years ago, the research team reported on Monday. While direct imaging, in this case in near-infrared wavelengths, is arguably the most important technique for observing planets around other stars, it's also the most challenging. 
The research is part of the Strategic Exploration of Exoplanets and Disks with Subaru, a project to directly image extrasolar planets and protoplanetary disks around several hundred nearby stars using the Subaru telescope on Mauna Kea. The five-year project began in 2009. That's been a look at some local tech news on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm Jackie Young. Now back to your programming. Every grade level as well. Oh, that's great. Well, you know, kids are so impressionable. They, they are. They so well. They really take it and run with they it. They pick everything up. Mm -hmm. So if you hit them in, uh, you know, the elementary school, you're going you're gonna to leave an impression on them for their whole lives. Absolutely. And build a whole generation of energy efficient people. This is good. I this agree. Goes, this goes from kindergarten all the way to high school, right? K through 12. K -12. That's right. Um, they have um, they have separate curriculum for each grade level. And uh, for teachers that are interested, uh, you can call Hawaii Energy and ask for Chelsea Harder. That's me. Uh, you can visit HawaiiEnergy.com or you can call 537-5577. So, and you are the transformational program management specialist, aren't you? Yes. Uh, um, it's a kind of a lengthy title, yes, but a lot of it, a lot of it is um, fostering behavioral change in energy efficiency and conservation. So, this is your program. This is this is my baby. It's great. Okay, wonderful. Okay, well, congratulations on that. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to the crowd. I'll, let's begin with you. Um, Michael, well, sure. if you have any cross-examination for Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> for Chelsea? You want to cross-exam? No. no I just, In a nice I, way. I know, I'm just, I, I think it's a wonderful program. You need to, um, you know, again, for elementary stu students, you need to really uh, embed that in their mind early on. So I think it's wonderful. I agree. Thank you. Sorry. Well, I don't know. Well, oh, sorry. 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 That, sorry. That was an easy come on. Now he's got some tough questions. <laughs> no, I mean, how has the uh, reception been by the, our teachers? Excellent. Teachers are really excited about it. Um, we actually offer substitute reimbursement for teachers as it is usually during the school year. Um, they get free kits because um, Hawaii Energy funds this program. And uh, we support them through, um, along, their, along their way. So how long is the program? What, what does the program consist of? The program consists of training, and um, teachers can come back and build upon those training. They can also train other teachers in this curriculum. So we're looking for it to come full circle with all the teachers in Hawaii. So is it like a year program? or? It's not a year program. It's just a, it's a training. It's a professional a development day. training. Oh. Yes, that's mm -hmm. correct. Through a website? Uh, yes, there is a website. It's need.org. What a great name. Oh, wow, I like that. That's worth money right there. We also have a section on HawaiiEnergy.com and education and outreach. Sarah, do you have any cross-examination? Well, I, I'm just sitting here listening to, to this, and I love how everything's interconnected. Um, here we are um, present today to talk about a future program that we're hoping to establish at UH West Oahu. And I just love the, the notion that these teachers can get students excited about energy um, concepts and energy efficiency and you know hopefully eventually they'll go to Honolulu Community College and then transfer to UH West Oahu and perhaps become uh, facility managers and do so in a way that um, really maximize energy efficiency so I, I, I've got plans for well, these let's take it a step further here okay. uh, suppose uh, Sherry and Michael suppose Chelsea called you maybe tomorrow Thursday okay, okay. And she said you know, we have this program in the schools to teach the, you know, the K through 12 teachers in school, but, you know, we really like to teach this program to the teachers in UH, in the community college. Would you take her? Sure. Sure? Sure. Hmm? Okay, just, I'm trying to make a deal for you, Chelsea. <laughs> Thank you. We actually already have a contact there, so we're looking to infiltrate needs curriculum into it. Okay. Hope you guys talk tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Chelsea Harder. Thank you, Jay. Nice Thank job. you all. Aloha. Aloha. Aloha nui loa. Okay, now we're going to go to a break and get ready for our, our discussion in chief, which is about building management and how it can be efficient too, with uh, Michael Barros and Sherry Proper and ultimately Paulette Feeney here on Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Okay, with me, Jay Fidel, and Sharon Moriwaki, we'll take a short break. We'll be right back.
Hi, I'm Donna Blanchard of Kumu Kuhue Theater, and when I was young I used to love watching Charlie Chan movies on Family Classic TV on Sunday afternoons. Our show at Kumu Kuhua that runs from August 22nd through September 22nd is called Will the Real Charlie, Charlie Chan Please Stand Up? It's written by Nancy P. Moss and takes place right here in Chinatown. I really hope you'll come in and watch it. You will love it. It's everything about the movies that you loved and more. Go to kumukuhua.org to get more information and your tickets. We'll see you there. We're back, we're live, we're at ThinkTech on Wednesday, which means Hawaii, the state of clean energy, and Sharon Moriwaki and I are conducting the proceedings <laughs> with Michael Barros of the Honolulu Community College and Sherry Proper of the University of Hawaii, West Oahu. And we're talking about building management can be efficient too, and by efficient I mean, and it's implied, I mean it's, efficient it's, in energy, because today energy is wins. Energy Wednesday. <laughs> Okay, can you, you two guys tell us how you got together on this program? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, we started um, really about, in Honolulu Community College, we have a lot going on as far as any energy efficiency, and um, it starts with both our non-credit and our credit programs. And uh, primarily, uh, right now, we have a lot of training going on in photovoltaic uh, installation and maintenance. Um, we also just received a uh, grant to um, uh, perform training for um, uh, EV training as well as um, hybrid and EV. I'm happy about that. So in fact, <laughs> just this week we had delivered uh, four um, LEAF oh, really? vehicles oh, to our oh, facility, nice. which was not only for Honolulu Community College, it's also going to go to Kauai, Maui, and uh, uh, Hawaii Community so Colleges. So all the community colleges have the same training? Right. Right, so and uh, developing the curriculum, and uh, they'll be doing uh, training for um, uh, electric vehicle as well as um, hybrid, mm -hmm. hybrid training. What, what's the training for electric vehicles? 
Repeat. Don't get electrocuted. <laughs> so are they we try to avoid that on a regular basis. <laughs> are they but, electricians or are they automotive? No, they're automotive, primarily automotive technicians. And then they, we also have, um, uh, so they follow up primarily the automotive technicians and then how do you uh, maintain or repair uh, electric vehicles, you know. And primarily, uh, a lot of it is safety. We've also con conducted, uh, conducted some training on um, emergency vehicle uh, personnel. How do you approach a vehicle, uh, electric EV vehicle that's in an accident that may be um, uh, shorted out? How would you approach that? Mm, yeah. So the fire department gives a course on this, you know that, yeah. right? And uh, we actually made a movie about that. And you know the problem? Uh, the problem is you can't, you can't see it. You, you don't know what's hot. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you, can't, you can't see flames that just electrocutes you. Yeah. So Same thing with hydrogen cars, you can't see it. Can't smell it or see it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So um, that's kind of on our non-credit side of the house. And um, we also did uh, recently had a grant to, uh, to do uh, training or develop curriculum for uh, smart grid technology. Huh? You know, how would, they, how would they, um, train the technicians to use a smart grid? Um, on the, on the, you getting uh, help from the union on this? Um, you know, like, like, uh, yeah. Electrical Workers Union. Yeah. They're, they're involved in developing the curriculum. I know they're real interested in this, and they, in fact, they have training facilities in their in their building there, which is in what it's right here in Kalihi. Yeah. Well, we have um, as far as uh, uh, apprenticeship programs, we have mm -hmm. a high number of apprentices apprentices who come onto our campus in the evenings and do, we do training there uh, in in a lot of the different trades. Big question. You know, what, what about the kids? I, I mean, the students. Yeah. Um, are they real interested in this sort of thing? Because, you know, automobile mechanics has been a favorite career for a lot mm -hmm. of people in the state. We have great automobile mechanics here. So the question is, are these kids who are interested in conventional automobile mechanics, you know, fossil, fossil automobile mechanics, um, can, <laughs> are they well, equally interested in electric vehicles? Well, it's interesting <clears throat> because when we're developing the curriculum for the, um, the EV courses, the, we get industry to come in and talk to us about what do, you, what do you need? How do? And primarily, they want a auto mechanic, and then they have to understand the working of the vehicle overall, brake systems, hydraulics, all you know, everything that goes into a vehicle. And then you also teach the electrical side. So it's the same. It's the same audience. There's people who are interested in in. Uh, uh, I think yeah, that's very valuable. Yeah. You know, and there are people at this table, actually, Michael. Uh, who have EVs and yeah. who might yeah, want to go to your that. course okay. and learn how to take care of them and repair them if necessary. So do you have, do you, have you know, the, the sort of the uh, more advanced uh, kids? <laughs> Can they come down too? Well, you can experiment on your car. Yeah, right, you know. right. <laughs> oh, that's what you want. It's a learning process, right? A learning process. But, uh, well, in fact, we're getting uh, some uh, charging stations installed at our facility, and then oh, we're nice. also having, I think, uh, four charging stations on campus being installed this uh, oh. this fall. Oh, that's great. So, and you're training them how to handle a charging station, maybe even how to build one? Not building, not yet. There are companies in yeah, Hawaii that yeah. do build them. It's really Correct. commendable. Yeah. yeah. So on that's on the um, non-credit side of the house. On the credit side of the house, we have... Uh, uh, what we call a, um, sustainable practices in a built in environment or uh, uh, construction practices for the built environment. And we have two courses. Um, one is uh, what we call interdisciplinary, uh, where it's can, it can be offered as a, a, it's offered online, it's a one credit course, and they talk about um, various uh, sustainable practices in building. Is it con construction in general, or is it in, in installation of photovoltaic, or well, what? The, the, not specifically, it's construction in general, because we have a lot of um, our technical programs, our career and technical programs are trade-based. So we have electricians, we have uh, sheet metal people, we have um, carpenters, so that course can help them get an overview on what are, what are sustainable oh, practices Having a in construction. Sharon and I went out to the Forest City development on the Kaneohe Marine Corps Air Base, remember that? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and what we found was uh, the, the supervisors on Forest City, it was a mainland company out of Ohio, I think, they're a great company. They also do 
uh, they do a lot of things. They're, do, they're doing a housing project now, I think in Kakaaka. I know. I, yeah, I sorry about watch. that. Anyway, they they <laughs> built they built a bunch of housing houses in the in the Kaneohe Marine Corps Air Base, and they made them energy efficient. Mm -hmm. Okay, and they they had to bring a lot of experts out here because they found that the local tradesmen really didn't know That's some of the techniques. Right. And and their the, their uh, contribution was that they taught the local tradesmen mm -hmm. how to make an energy efficient house. There's a lot of tricks that, that are not conventional construction techniques. So right. you're teaching those tricks. Yeah, now, yeah, we're starting to embed that in our in our programs. So and then we also recently uh, developed a two year construction management program. And within a construction management program we have um, not only you know lead, it, you talk about lead certifications, what need what the requirements well, are. The for same that. thing as need, though. Need. No, not, not need. <laughs> we heard lead. from Chelsea. This is need. Okay. <laughs> well. <laughs> but equally, it's but really a short <laughs> examination. <after> <laughs> Multiple choice. <laughs> and and um, we do have a specific course that um, that talks about sustainable building practices in a uh, building environment for construction managers. Mm -hmm. and, and that's what led us to West Oahu as we were developing our two-year degree. Um, uh, we wanted to uh, do a two plus two where after they get their two-year associate degree, they can move on to get a four-year degree in construction management. And as we were having that discussion, construction or facilities management came into the picture. And that's kind of how we got on this road with uh, Oahu, mm -hmm. West Oahu oh. College. And, Sherry and so yeah. we're, we're in the early talking stages right now and IFMA was part of a very uh, part of the whole discussion. Well, that's one of my favorite acronyms but you'll have to tell the people what you yeah. mean by it. It sounds like you have some speech impediment. <laughs> what, 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 is, what did you say? Facilities if, if, no. if, 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 there's no C or K in, in IFSMA. If, 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 what does that stand for? International Facility Please. Management Association. Did yes. you know that? So, I did know that. <laughs> yeah, so the local chapter is very active and they would like us and they're working with us very closely. And maybe Sherry can sure. talk, talk more. Yeah, well, we would love to build on all the exciting things that are happening on the campus at uh, Honolulu Community College and, and especially in this construction management program uh, because uh, what, what we were seeing is that both construction management and facilities management as uh, career fields are becoming more demanding and comprehensive and there's so much interconnection between the two. Um, people who build buildings now, uh, as Michael explained, uh, need to pay attention to how to build them in an efficient, energy efficient way and they need to set them up so that the people managing the buildings can, you know, can easily do so. People who manage the buildings need to understand how the how the building was built, and um, need to understand the, the you know the, the technical systems and um, you know now they, the facilities uh, managers need to be able to develop a comprehensive maintenance plan that includes energy efficient um, you know replacement of parts and, and things like that. So. Um, it's, it's very exciting. Uh, we're thrilled what to be... What can you bring to the table? Well, what we can bring to the table is a four-year bachelor's degree. Really? Um, yes. So Mike, Mike is, Michael is going to bring a two-year two year, two year two year year. program? The first two years. And then so then what, what happens? They, they go from Michael to you, Sherry? Is that what happens? They, yes. You they, pass them off like a baton? Yes. So <laughs> yeah. we would work out um, the articulation agreement in advance so that students would have an efficient academic pathway to move efficiently from their associate degree to their bachelor's degree. We already have a Bachelor of Applied Science. Uh, we have a really solid core set of classes um, already in existence, and we already have um, really high quality business courses in management and um, you know environmental policy and things like that. So where, what we're missing in this new piece is 
the focus on facilities management. So we're working with the great folks um, with IFMA, International Facilities Management That's Association. IFMA. IFMA. Yeah. As well as with Hawaii Energy um, to guide us and help us in understanding exactly what courses do we need to kind of round out this curriculum uh, and uh, provide um, you know, a concentration in um, applied science that addresses all of these needs. So well, I'll tell you, exciting. you know, why, why it's important, okay? I, I spent a fair amount of time in my law practice with the Building Owners and Managers Association, BOMA, and this is something on your, on your sheet of uh, who recognizes um, this project, and that's the BOMI Institute, uh, the Building Owners and Managers Institute, which is part of BOMA. Anyway, um, the big problem is operating expenses, right? And operating expenses in Hawaii are are deep breathing exercises because it costs so much for fuel oil, right? So uh, the cost of power goes up, but the tenant has to pay more, lots more. And so the buildings compete on trying to keep that down. And when we get back from this break, I'll tell you why you're so important to that formula. Okay. This is Think Tech. I'm here with Sharon Moriwaki. We're talking to Sherry Proper and Michael Barros. We're talking about management facilities can be efficient too. We'll be right back after this break. Aloha, I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech Hawaii, broadcasting live from the Pioneer Plaza in downtown Honolulu. We raise public awareness about tech, energy, and globalism in Hawaii. Technology is critical to our state. A vibrant tech sector will give us new prospects in the global marketplace and will offer great careers and make our economy more resilient. Streaming live on Ustream and Spreaker, ThinkTech allows its hosts and guests invaluable opportunities to report important events and discuss important questions, and to be heard here in Hawaii and around the world. You can find links to our live streams on thinktechhawaii.com or on our mobile website, m.thinktechhawaii.com. And you can see our archive on YouTube. It's all just a click away. We want to do whatever we can to keep Hawaii relevant, connected, and thriving in the complexity of the 21st century. We hope you will help us in those efforts. Tune in today. This is Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. Mahalo. Thank you, Jack Waters. Thank you, Leah Rodriguez. This is uh, Think Tech, and it's Wednesday, so we're talking about Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Our uh, supporters are DBED, Department of Business, Economic Development, and Tourism, Hawaii Energy, and Hawaii Electric Company. We're talking about building management, or maybe, maybe we should say facilities management, okay, and energy efficiency. And we've had a slight change in our cast of characters. Sharon has taken a walk, Sharon Moriwaki, but she'll be back. And sitting in her seat, okay, is Paulette Feeney. And so now we have three academicians all at the same table. This is heavy. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Paulette. Thanks, Jerry. <laughs> Say something academic. 
Oh, no. We don't want that. <laughs> well, that is from Outreach College at UH Manoa. Uh, I just want to finish what we were talking about before. It seems to me that it's really important that A, we have a, we have a workforce who is skilled mm -hmm. in dealing with energy efficiency, because that will lead to energy efficiency. Mm -hmm. And B, it helps the tenants, because it's a pass-through. If there's a lot of energy being wasted, if there's a lot of fossil fuel involved, they pay for it. That's where they get hurt. And we don't want to hurt small business. And that's what it amounts to. So if you can make uh, facilities management cheaper by having smart people running energy efficient facilities, then you really help everybody. And I think Hawaii needs that. And so you're doing important work when you train them. Thank you. Both We're very excited about the program yeah. and having a purposeful uh, academic pathway for people who want to have this type of a career so that it's not an ad hoc after the fact, you know, um, way of trying to get the training they need. Yeah, pretty exciting. We're looking for industry partners to work with us. So, so um, any folks uh, interested, well, <clears throat> contact me. Let me suggest that the people who should be contacting you probably tomorrow morning, uh, right after you talk to Chelsea uh, Harder, okay. uh, is the Building Owners and Managers Association itself, which is a you know a conglomeration of owners and managers who run mostly uh, big office buildings, but others too. Uh, NIOP, the National Association of um, in Industrial and Office Properties, which is a, uh, an important organization. And all of them are involved heavily in building management. Uh, all of them would like to see, you know, a, a workforce developed that can do exactly what you're teaching. So uh, this is really turning the corner. It's serendipitous mm -hmm. that we do it now as part of the Clean Energy Initiative, but you know, it was always helpful, and it will always be helpful, and it will always help the economy. Now, so the question, you know, Paulette, is why, why are you at this table? Well, I run continuing education non-credit programs for the Outreach College, and we have a heavy emphasis on professional development for people who have graduated from college long ago, or in some cases may not have attended college, but they're working professionals who need updates in their careers to set, fulfill their roles more effectively. And obviously, with energy efficiency a big concern these days, um, I, I became involved in the pursuit of classes on sustainability about five years ago and offered a variety of, of non-credit courses that were just short workshops. But I quickly learned from BOMA that there was a need for uh, training for building operators because those are the hands-on guys and, and women in some cases who are out there making the adjustments to the air conditioning, uh, looking at the lighting and deciding on retrofits in some cases or recommending retrofits. So they're the people who can make things happen in buildings to make them hum more efficiently. So I found this program out of Seattle um, called the Building Operator Certification. It's a non-credit training, and um, the BOC. I got in, the BOC, and I got it's in touch. It's going to be a short examination on the acronyms. <laughs> okay. okay, BOC. Really? So I got in touch with the uh, the organization that uh, developed the curriculum, the Northwest Energy Efficiency Alliance, and they said, "Well, gee, we already signed a contract with Maui College. They're uh, starting the training next month." So I said, "Well, wait a minute." Maui mm -hmm. College is on Maui. We're, we're islands. We need to have this training on all our islands, uh, and probably most especially on Oahu, where we have all these big office buildings and, and large hospital facilities, hotels, you know. So uh, I had a conversation with Maui Co uh, College, and we agreed to share. <laughs> so uh, I brought the program here, and it's in its fourth year now. Uh, so we've graduated people from the health sector, uh, from education, from, uh, gosh, a whole variety. A lot of BOMA people uh, have sent um, their operators. And um, we've seen energy savings that have resulted uh, from... Do you have a way of measuring that? that? Well, I don't exactly. I, I haven't. I haven't pursued it, but I know that the Northwest Energy Efficiency Council, which is affiliated with the curriculum development arm of, of that same organization in Seattle, 
uh, has done follow-up studies with some of the other large markets that have used the curriculum. So the course that we offer, it's, it's an eight session program, eight full days of training, which we hold on Saturdays to keep uh, the buildings operating efficiently during the week. So the guys, the, the, the students that attend do have to come on their own time and work it out with their employers. These are people in the industry, they already have jobs yes. and managing yes. facilities. They're either managing or they're operating under like managers. engineers, that sort of thing. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, you're, you're doing the same thing that these guys are. You're building a better workforce with, you know, with more skill, more Akamai about uh, how, to, how to manage these buildings, and, and that helps everybody. Right. I mean, in, in energy and really everything else. I just wonder how you coordinate, for example, uh, BOMA, as I recall, has correspondence courses. That's, right. well, that's a term online. that went out with high button shoes, online. but <laughs> online, yeah. Correspondence yes. courses. <laughs> Talk yes. about how the world has passed us by. Okay, online courses. And they Thank always you. had online courses. So Thank the question you. is, and I know they have online courses about engineering issues and probably energy issues, because that energy is involved in every facility, like it or not. Um, so how do you coordinate your stuff with the you know, online courses that BOMA offers its members? Well, it's a choice, you know. Some people are better learners face-to-face, uh, -face, you know, hands-on, trying things out. And this program does involve five projects where you actually have to do, uh, you do things, lighting, lighting survey or uh, indoor environmental or quality, which is uh, also called indoor air quality survey. Uh, and make recommendations based on your own facility. So it's a, it's a good thing for people who need that hands-on approach to learning. And um, there are reciprocal arrangements with BOMA as well as um, the U.S. Green Building Council where these classes are recognized for their continuing education. Oh, good. So you yeah. get reciprocal credit. And vice versa, uh, yes. Certificates and, and it helps you get licensed or at least uh, go, go up the steps of BOMA certifications. I think yes. that's what it is. But let me, you know, in the third quarter of our show, we're still in that, we still have a three minutes left in the third quarter of our show, um, Sharon Moriwaki makes me ask, <laughs> that's Sharon over there, uh, <laughs> she makes me ask, what are the challenges? What are the obstacles? What are the problems? And all three of you guys are trying to, you know, raise the bar for building managers and engineers and uh, all that. Uh, where are the problems? Where do you see, Sherry, where do you see the problems? Well, for us at UH West Oahu, uh, this will be a new concentration, and so we need industry partners um, to help us determine the curriculum, because we want to provide, um, you know, exactly what industry needs. Um, so that's a challenge. Um, we're beginning to reach out to industry um, partners and so we hope that they'll be responsive to this idea um, and of course um, curriculum development is costly we're going to need uh, to hire a faculty member um, either a full-time faculty member to teach uh, the courses we we need in this concentration or um, uh, several lecturers uh, depending on how exactly we develop the can't curriculum. you get an adjunct from the community I mean there are yeah, experts that, out that, there that's possible <laughs> that's yeah. possible well, yeah. you guys still have to pay for it, so that's we the problem. Yeah. It's, it's so uh, it, it, getting enough students to cover the cost, and, you know, and getting the, the enough um, momentum going. Yeah. So this is the problem for all three of you, isn't it? It's a common problem. You, you are trying to bring all sides of the equation into the center of things, yeah. the hub, as it were. You want the students, you want the supporters. Uh, what did you call them? Partners. Partners. Yeah. Uh, I call them sponsors. <laughs> We'll take you mean there's money <laughs> involved. <okay. laughs> um, you try. You want the administration of your respective institutions to cooperate, um, and you need faculty and somebody has to pay the faculty. It's all this. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to create the hub of this activity, but you all have the same common denominator challenges, I guess. How are you going to deal with that? I uh, had a breakthrough this coming fall. Better a breakthrough than a breakdown. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Hawaii Energy has um, agreed to sponsor uh, Excellent. people. Excellent. So uh, anyone who qualifies after filling out an application um, and submitting a statement saying why 
why they deserve to be sponsored, how they can uh, bring efficiencies to the market that um, benefit the ratepayers here in Hawaii will get a subsidy for 75% of their... Oh, that's people. great. So th th yeah. they will help your students directly then? Or yes. is it through you? No, they'll help the students directly. I mean, the student will only have to pay 25% of the fees. So, so Paul, how, how does your program differ than, from the program that Sherry and Michael programs? That Sherry it's, and Michael well, are putting together. I, I offer non-credit programs. They're uh, outside of the realm of academia, but they're professional programs so that they're supplementing what what you learn. Uh, they're for the people who are quite frankly usually older you know have have already had their education they're not facing their education so they're not going to be building tomorrow's buildings uh, or in most cases they're not lucky enough to have the brand new building to uh, to manage uh, which will have all the good give certificates. Yeah, we do. We give a, a, there is a certification process at the end of the program. Okay. How long, is the, how long does the program take? Well, we're running this one through January, but I like to, my personal approach is that it's easier to digest the knowledge if you take this one day of training and then take it back to your workplace for two or three weeks and then come back for your next day of training. So I spread it out through a little more than a semester mm -hmm. in this case, but I find that it sticks when you do it that way. Yeah. Um, okay, we're going to take another break now, but I, I want to leave a question hanging for after the break, okay? That is, you guys are building people who are either employed or, more importantly, employable. Uh, are you doing anything to help them get jobs with their new skills? Don't answer it now. We'll be right back. This is Think Tech. We're talking about Hawaii and State of Clean Energy. We're talking about building facilities management can be energy efficient too. With Sharon Moriwaki, Paulette Feeney, uh, Michael Barros, and Sherry Proper. Oh, we're having a great time. We'll be right back after this break. This is Think Tech, broadcasting a new stream and speaker day and night, doing our thing on OC16 and Olelo, and uploading videos all over YouTube. See the links on thinktechhawaii.com.
are back. We're live. We're here on Wednesday uh, with Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Uh, we're talking about building management, facilities management, how uh, that can be efficient too, as far as energy is concerned. And we have at the table, we have three people. We have, um, you know, our newest, our newest entry at the table is Paulette Feeney. She's been very good, you know, very, very nice. Good, good thoughts. Michael Barros. Uh, Paul Affini is from Outreach College, UH Manoa. Michael Barros is from Home Community College. And Sherry Proper, she's from West Oahu, University of Hawaii. West Oahu. And the, the question I put to you, I didn't forget. Uh, the, the cliffhanger question, okay, going into this last quarter is, are you guys helping them with their new skills, getting jobs? Because, you know, if it was me and I couldn't find a job so easily, I'd go through your programs and I'd say, hmm, now I get a job. Because these jobs are nice, you know. Uh, being a building manager and engineer is a nice job. Mm -hmm. Can you help me? Well, in our proposed program, uh, we would help students in a number of ways uh, to, um, to get jobs. Uh, the first way is through those um, industry partners that uh, we hope to work with. Oh, sure, they could hire, yeah. Or well, they could we're, hoping, touch, yeah. we're yeah. hoping that they will help us provide meaningful activities, um, projects, for students so that students have some hands-on experience when they go out um, to look for jobs. Um, we also uh, will have a capstone internship requirement for the program, so we, we're going to actually put students out in a, in a job, so to speak, um, as their capstone experience. Um, so we're giving them the extra experiential learning uh, opportunity in this program. And uh, then finally, uh, we hope to obtain the necessary certifications so that our graduates are fully certified. Here or elsewhere. Here yeah. or elsewhere, yes. Yes. This is good. To so be considered we generate all a proliferation of talent that way. Okay. We hope so. You know, it's strikes. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, oh, it's happening already in our construction management where we're putting students out into the industry and partnering and and uh, the industry is coming back to us and asking us for more. Oh, you have great. another student like this, you know, and it, it's turned out really, really well. The students are excited, they're learning new things, and they're putting their skills that they're learning and knowledge they're learning to practice right away, and they can come back and ask questions and learn. So it's, it's been um, That's great. good. That's great. So th that means that when Sharon Moriwaki goes down there for the uh, the the uh, repair of electric vehicles, uh, of course, she can also take construction management courses. She sure time. can, yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, you know, it strikes me that there's another common denominator, and that's Tom Apple. Right? I don't know. Does he control the community college? No. It's no, just Manoa. It's Manoa. No, it's just Manoa. And he doesn't control West Oahu, but you know who he is. I noticed you. Yeah. You, you had you had nodded when I mentioned his name, and certainly he controls outreach, right? Not really. Okay, well, so far I've scored we, three we times fall, on that. We fall under the vice chancellor for academic <laughs> it's affairs. Slipping through. Yeah, that's delegated. The thing about Tom Apple, though, is that you know part of his thing, which he which he brought with him from Delaware, uh -huh. he was at University of Delaware before, uh -huh. was the um, the need for the university to uh, to participate with uh, the civilian community, if you will, <laughs> you know, the, the business community outside. Right. And um, and he's committed to that, and it just strikes me that you guys, each in your own way, is developing a, a program that's an outreach program. Mm -hmm. That's your middle name, actually, yeah. uh, Paulette. <laughs> an outreach program where you are talking to the community. You're not only on the student side, but um, on the supporter side, and for that matter, maybe on adjunct faculty side. And you're bringing this all all this stuff together, and that's exactly what Tom Apple was talking about when he when he first. You know, express this vision of his uh, for the, the new UH. So I think you're right in line, although it must be hard. You're right in line to do this. It's good. So uh, my question is now: <clears throat> Suppose I listen to this show, I get all excited, <laughs> yeah. and uh, I would like to I would like to join up. Okay. So if you could all tell me individually how I can join your programs. Let me begin with you, Mike. Well, at Honolulu Community College, you can uh, you know. Uh, and apply in it uh, for entrance in, as a regular credit student through the application process. Um, and I get a, I get a two year degree. Two year through degree. This program. Or or through our PCAT or the Pacific um, Center for Advanced Technology Training. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like an extension of our non credit side, and that uh, that that website is pcat.org. 
Um, so you can go on there and see what's there for for the working person that, that doesn't have the time to to uh, or might have already a degree. They just want to upgrade their skills. Uh -huh. That's 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 uh, available. Well, I, I can sign up for night courses. Night right? courses. So yes. it's after hours, I can work during right. the day and all that. And some of our, even our some of our credit programs. Uh, we're, in fact, we're moving the construction management courses more to later courses right. to attract more of uh, the working. Uh, individuals out there that, that need upgrading their skills and uh, a two-year degree might help them get that next raise or that next advancement and oh, in this, yeah. contribution make everybody so. happy. So how long does it take to finish a two-year degree? I know that's not like a trick question. <laughs> I, used, I, used to, I used to teach draft law in the 60s and I would always start my class with in what year did they have the War of 1812? <laughs> and nobody would raise his hand. Anyway, how long does it take to finish a two-year course in this subject? But I mean, if you if you take all the courses required in the in the semesters, like 15, 15 credits, you probably could do it in two years. Typically, most of our students are part time, so it depends on how many credits they take and, and how they advance and where they start. So if uh, if you're you tested into a um, lower level courses and you don't meet the prereqs, you might have another semester or two to, uh, before you can even enter into the program. Mm -hmm. Okay, you can take your time. You don't yeah. have to rush. No. Now, you, and then you're going to pass off your students to Sherry, I mean, if they want to take another two mm -hmm. years. But there's no, before they finish the, the two years uh, degree, they don't really go to Sherry yet. Right? It's like, you know, not like they would take a course with Sherry and they were in the middle of the program with you. They would finish the program yeah, first. Yeah, typically they would finish up with okay. us first. So Sherry, um, how do they get into your program? Well, um, our program doesn't exist yet, um, but when it does... I like candor. <laughs> <laughs> Good answer. But it will. It will. We're optimistic that, it, that we will get to that point and it will exist. Um, students would apply for admission and indicate that they're interested in this um, construction management or facilities ma management concentration and we'll get them in. You should talk with Forest City and all the big construction development companies. I'm sure they would be interested, all yeah, of you guys. Yeah. Okay, uh, Paulette, um, you're a little bit different, I think. Well, right. not as a person, but as an <laughs> institution. <laughs> right. yeah, well, it, yeah, what we do is different. Yeah. Um, I have a website a dedicated website just for this program. It's outreach.hawaii.edu slash BOC and it has all the courses listed and it, more than you could even now know. I know why that uh, acronym is so familiar to me. It used to mean big man on campus. Oh, oh. it's a BMOC. <laughs> BMOC. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> for for those be, of us who remember. This would just be big on campus. <laughs> all right. Which is more gender neutral. Yeah, I like sorry. that. Okay. <laughs> okay <good. laughs> I'm making progress. <laughs> um, and you can also always call me at 956-2037. Uh, I have an email address too, but it's easier to just give you my phone number and I uh, email the applications because to get the Hawaii Energy Assistance, you do need to fill out an application, which I will email you and submit it first to me, then it goes to Hawaii Energy. I already have seven applications for this program and only 24 seats, so I think it's going to fill. Uh, it doesn't start till September 28th. Well, it's coming soon, though. Yeah. Is, is there homework? Which is the whole course? How much is, how much is how much, the whole course? If you pay it all out of pocket, it's one thousand six hundred dollars. Yeah. Um, if you um, if you qualify and are accepted for the Hawaii Energy subsidy, it's four hundred dollars for the whole course. Yeah. Okay, you guys, we're sorry, we're out of time. I wish there was more. I wish there were hours more. Time flies when you have time flies uh, uh, here at Hawaii, the state of clean energy, with Sharon Mori, Waki, and me. I'm talking about building and facilities management, how they can be efficient too, uh, with Paulette Feeney, Michael Barros, uh, and Sherry Proper. Thank you very much, all you guys. You're not academician at all. You're very nice people. <laughs> Thank you for having us. Yes, thanks so much for having us. Thank you so much. Wish you well in all of your programs. Thank you. Thank you. Aloha. Thanks for coming Aloha. down. Okay.